Namaste. Namaste. And welcome to our continuing series, Savitri is the Message, as always with our beloved Alokbhai. We are in the Book of Yoga, Book 7, and we'll begin with the quote, Beginning, O Soul. O soul, bear not thy kingdom to the foe. Consent to hide thy royalty of bliss, lest time and fate find out its avenues and beat with thunderous knock upon thy gates. Hide, whilst thou canst, thy treasure of separate self behind the luminous rampart of thy depths, till of a vaster empire it grows part. But not for self alone the self is one. Content abide not with one conquered realm. Adventure all to make the whole world thine, to break into greater kingdoms, turn thy force. This is um, the voice of light after the voice of night. Mm. So, Savitri has had the psychic realization and along with that she has an opening of the centers. This part was an easy part. Shobindu says, I mean easy, relatively. Shobindu says the only thing that is safe in the yoga is psychic realization. All else is or can be dangerous. And that's why he says that first thing should be realizing the psychic being, becoming one with it. Then when you go through the entire adventure, cosmic adventure, <laughs> at least you have that door which is open in which you can always uh, get in and stay quiet while the storm is raging outside. So, Savitri has also realized the psychic and it's so beautiful. Life is beautiful. There is no death. So means the fear of death is gone. What is there? I'll come again and again and take the journey. That's a state. I will travel with him. And uh, the, the reality of death as we understand in ignorance vanishes. One knows it's a change of forms. And she could stay in that state and be regarded as a saintly human being, saintly person uh, for the rest of her life. So while she is in that state, because she has come for a greater work, suddenly an abyss opens and she is invaded by an unknown fear. And that unknown fear tells her that all this is, none, none of this is true. All this psychic state, this wonderful state, devotion, faith, mm. all this, uh, uh, you know, uplifted, exalted feelings. These are not true. I am truth and I am death. I am all else is a maya, including the experiences that you are having. And all else is uh, a cheat, an illusion, and the real truth is of nothingness. Now, it is an unknown fear that invades her because, you know, it's like a doubt which can corrode the entire thing. And it's not entirely false. Yeah, it's not entirely uh, false. There is, is speaking uh, some truth yeah, also. Only twisting it by the tail. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, uh, now we have the voice of the light after the voice of night. And that's what is the interesting part. And it's for all of us to remember. So, otherwise, uh, one is that we stop at psychic realization, which is uh, wonderful. That's what we see in certain mystics in the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, lot of bhakti yoga in India, lot of uh, uh, bhakti yoga in, in the Christian mysticism. Sufism, and even when they had some experiences of the beyond, it stopped with that higher consciousness. But here there is a different work altogether. So the voice of light reminds her, the voice of light after the voice of night, the cry of the abyss drew heaven's reply, a might of storm chased by the might of the sun. O soul, bear not thy kingdom to the foe. So who is the foe here? It is the inconscient. So one is don't start revealing what all has happened inside you and what you have realized. Just contain it within. Normally it is said that the experiences and realizations have to be talked either to the Guru and certainly not to uh, people who are, you know, uh, adverse to the whole yoga because either they throw jealousy or doubts 
and corrode it unless they are established deep within and the standard practice is 10 years 10 years you had something it is fixed inside the consciousness Otherwise, when i when i had my first experience with sri arbindo mother wrote back uh, do not try to make a mental thing of it because yes. it would be quite useless yes and also sometimes of course if one is not careful it can enter the head and all kinds of things can happen so first thing is bear not thy kingdom to the foe consent to hide thy royalty of bliss practically it means i am mother's favorite child i am a special child i am in contact with the divine i am you know <laughs> so be careful i am an instrument of god one may be but the whole creation is an instrument of god <laughs> seen from one side maybe this or that but all, all creation is nothing else but a manifestation of the divine and uh, instrument of the divine less time and fate find out its seven news so you see the story of krishna now gives a deeper sense so krishna is born krishna is born quietly he has gone away from the prison but kansa is trying to find where is he chasing him so all around he has sent his people time and fate find it out find its seven news because if they find those seven news then they can knock upon yeah, the gates yeah. with and beat with thunderous knock upon thy gates so one should never oh i am even these things that you know divine mother is with me what can happen to me it is a truth but when this truth can be spoken in a beautiful way this truth can be spoken in a braggart way <laughs> so <laughs> one has to be careful yes. and that can this a little shift it's the inner state one should be careful about hide whilst thou canst thy treasure of separate self it won't be for long but hide as long as you can hide with the divine mother we see this that how she uh, later on she spoke speaks about all these experiences but how carefully she had hidden all this and uh, in japan people didn't know who she is but they felt a tremendous sweetness oozing out from her and they were drawn to her because of that sweetness and of course she was known as somebody who could understand the depths of human nature its complexities but <laughs> she would she did not speak that time about her realizations later on she said and that's perfectly valid <coughs> so that everyone it's and even in the prayers mm. it seems that um, they were not meant for they were not yeah, yeah they were not her prayers they were meant for us yeah but for a long time she did not allow it no. to publication it's right. sure bindo who insisted that she should publish it so only um, if and i remember correctly he translated, he yeah, translated many he, some of them, of them too, yes. many of them and only one fifth of the prayers have been published the rest she tore away the pages which were deeply personal and they were burned she didn't want anybody to read them hide whilst thou canst thy treasure of separate self behind the luminous rampart of thy depth still of a vaster empire it grows apart one day one will burst into the cosmic consciousness then you can't help it but till then stay with it and then but not for self alone the self is one this hiding is not meant to be forever that you know you are there one day you have to enter into the larger work and because it's not only for your own mukti your own liberation because finding the psychic being is is actually a freedom one is liberated one one is freed from the fundamental ignorance that who am i one knows who one is content abide not with one conquered realm adventure all to make the whole world thine to break into greater kingdoms turn thy force so now the next step is the cosmic consciousness which we see in the next canto but there is something which must happen before that uh, this what is being described to us fear not to be nothing that thou mayest be all because it means uh, when mother came to india she says when i came i understood what is meant by uh, renouncing your experience 
So what she did was, uh, you have to, when you step out into the cosmic consciousness, you can no more be all the time in that state of intense psychic. Uh, you have entered into a larger kingdom. And we see both in Sri and the mother's case, how when they entered into that state, I have been digging deep and long into horror of filth on Maya. You have to uh, get past that because otherwise you cannot enter into the work. But it is always the door is open. At any point of time you can enter because that's what you have already claimed. Yes. So now comes that part. Ascend to the emptiness of the Supreme that all in thee may reach its absolute. That means now detailed working starts on each and every part of nature. Yes. Everything has to be taken to the Supreme. That all in thee may reach its absolute except to be small and human on the earth. So then naturally you are, I think uh, the other day I was mentioning about the experience somebody watching television and watching a football match. Except to be human and ordinary. At one place there is a letter of Sri Aurobindo. Uh, early days when people wanted to come and join, he would say no, no. And he even writes that if you come, you won't even understand my state. I am practicing the yoga as a householder and then there are a number of things he says. And at one point he even goes on to say, he says, if you come here, you have to be ready and willing to be like the most ordinary of the ordinary human beings. Then you can follow the path because the yoga shakti will touch the most hidden, the most ordinary, the most small parts. Even the darkest. Even the darkest because that's how it operates. So if one wants to remain like a holy man, like a, you know, great human being who is always revered and respected, then yes, it's okay. There is a psychic realization. There are some experiences of the higher consciousness. That's it. That was the old yogas. But here, and, and it goes on. Interrupting thy newborn divinity that man may find his utter self in God. So that's what we see in the mother and that's why people couldn't understand how she... For a long time, the mother would not step out. She would stay in a room and most of the time, and that famous thing about uh, Amrita, he asked Shurabindo, she is a great yogin. Yes, she is the greatest of yogins, but she doesn't give meditation. Amrita tells Shurabindo, she says, yes, but one day impelled by the divine love, she will step out and that indeed will be a great day. And then when she stepped out, Everything, the department, this, that, the whole creation, or yeah. will and the world. I'll continue. Uh, yeah, please. If for thy own sake only thou hast come, an immortal spirit into the mortal's world, to found thy luminous kingdom in God's dark, in the unconscious realm one shining star, one door in the ignorance opened upon light. Why hadst thou need? Why hadst thou any need to come at all? Yes, if it is just to realize the psychic being, well, the soul knows itself, or to have self-realization. So why there was a need to come? So we are children of immortality, true, but we have come here in the realm of death to build immortally with mortal things. That's how Shivindo puts. Yes. To build immortally with mortal things. This is the word. Yes. Because there is darkness, the children of light must come. Clarioning darkness is end. This is the work for which we have come. And not just to realize that little lamp inside which anyways is burning in the dark. Thou hast. Thou hast come down into a struggling world to aid a blind and suffering mortal race, to open to light the eyes that could not see, to bring down bliss into the heart of grief, to make thy life a bridge twixt earth and heaven. In one of her conversations, the mother speaks of the double movement of yoga. She says the individual and the collective movement. And she says there is an interdependence. So, the effort also must be a two-way effort. Individual yoga is one part, 
but then there is also the dimension of the collective yoga the the mankind and if not mankind at least those who are around and it must be that participation through which everybody evolves and then she says now you will understand why i have collective meditations in collective meditations what happens is that those who are more developed inside by developed i mean the you know realize yeah yes. and the urge is the fire is much more and um, it automatically gets uh, in a way distributed so those who have smaller fire they catch it and uh, they stand to gain but on the other hand those who have a greater fire will be sharing it and it's a very interesting process it's a kind of leveling but it helps the collective good because if the collectivity doesn't advance simultaneously the individual will also stop after a point so may i ask what you see right now in the world regarding collective versus individual well man is trying to figure out the right uh, balance it's one of the most difficult things to find because on see the individuality that um, has been talked about in the last um, i think few decades mostly is the surface ego individuality but it was necessary for man to at least assert himself vis-a-vis -vis the society and the collectivity he had to break free he could not wait for the entire social advance society to advance so in 60s we see that you know the urge for individuality became very strong and it took all kinds of shapes that's one part now we see that there is a different movement also simultaneously where large groups of mankind are coming up with an aspiration which is you know like in corona time for instance now a mail has been circulating that let's all meditate together and they fixed a time and different zones mm -hmm. uh, this is one way i'm not uh, for or against i'm just saying that you know people want to come together for a greater good and yoga day yoga day unity people want so there is this aspect of now because certain individuals who broke free out of them because they broke free from the standard social norms they started going here there and some landed up with uh, you know uh, in the right spot some so <laughs> some but because of that there was a growth of individuals all over now this idea that i have to follow the standard format in which my life has been fixed forever was gone this they did as if as a first uh, otherwise many people wouldn't have been able to land up even in in pondicherry you know people used to tell um, uh, that don't send your children here why because there is a magic going on there what is the magic they don't feel like going back and the story is you know you'll see a case against shurbindo at 17 year of age somebody has come and there is a case registered there in the files what is the case he has kidnapped the child who is here <laughs> so later on all this started this consent and all ab like you know uh, amrita he came at a very young age but oh, of yeah. course with his like because he grew up with shurbindo <laughs> then there was um, i think uh, it was ganga dharan ji and he came around 17 and uh, or one of the persons from nearby trunel well it must be ganga dharan and um, they the parents said you know how can uh, he stay on there he wants to be here but the parents are completely against and technically you just can't keep a 17 year old child <laughs> how he used to come swimming through the river and then he would come telling them that i am you know going somewhere else to studies and he would come here amal kiran the famous instance because parents won't allow him to travel unless he gets married so he got married dalat pandey also wanted to come both of them got married just to come here but because parents won't allow so they took a ticket to kolkata that we are going for honeymoon to calcutta and very well planned from calcutta they came to chennai from there to pondicherry till chennai they informed parents said now that we have come here we thought uh, we might as well go to pondicherry <laughs> but you can't stay in different so this was the state so individuals broke free from that norm which was we, necessary we could take a little talk a little bit about amrita's situation and nolini because 
Amrita's parents wanted him to get married, yeah? and there was no ah. way out of this. <laughs> so Sri Aurobindo told Nolini, cut his hair. <laughs> <laughs> and Nalinda rides with a surgical precision. <laughs> yes. At night, yes. he cut his hair without his realizing that yes. his surgery is being done. And next day morning, and it saved him from marriage. So that was the state that time. Even women, women could not imagine to come to, you know, place. Uh, this is the story of Jayadi at, um, in 1928, when she came to uh, meet Shirobindo. She was going to Rameshwaram. And because of Tirthi Yatra, she has been allowed some permission. But she wanted to see Shirobindo. After seeing, she doesn't go further. And Shirobindo asked her that, uh, you don't want to go to Rameshwaram. He said, I have seen the living Rameshwaram, why should I go? Ah, yes, but yes. one day he says that, uh, I have one prayer to you. What is the prayer? Don't make me a woman in next life. Oh. But why? He says, what do you know the difficulties and challenges of a woman? <laughs> <laughs> Just to come here, I had to ask... Uh, so much convince my parents and everybody just to come here. We see the same thing in Eshadi's life. How much rigor? Yes, yes. And Sri smiles and gives an answer. Don't worry, it will not be necessary. I'm, the age is going to change in such a way that women will have as much freedom as men. So this whole phase of individuality was needed. And still is needed because still there are, you know, a lot yes. of things. Yes. But out of these individuals, there are there is a group which has come to realize that within the human boundaries, I am it's very limited. So Shivinda speaks of these four stages of social development and the conduct, standards of conduct. First is when one is um, like a brute. So brute is alone. He is one kind of individuality. He just... Might is right. Whatever I feel like doing, I'll do. Whoever wins is the victor is like Sugriv and Bali. <laughs> That's it. Then to control the brute, there comes the social law. Which is uh, what we see that, you know, do's, don'ts. Uh, thus, you know, women will not go to temples and such places in a particular time. All these rules and regulations of a society come. It, it controls the brute. And for the brute, this is... External control is the one which is needed. Then there is a revolt and the individual stage comes. So then you have individuals. And then individual realizes his limitations. Individual is formed by struggling against the society. He is a rebel, revolt. He tries to form his own views, ideas about life and things. And then comes the fourth stage where he surrenders the individuality to the divine. So at every level you will have certain washouts. So when the individual break free from the society, some will reach that point mm -hmm. of realizing that I have to surrender myself to the divine. But you have to go through this stage. Now the more this number increases who are surrendering to the divine, the more you will see the, in the true sense a collective change beginning upon earth. So that's exactly what, um, when Nalnida was asked, when there was confusion going on in Auroville and uh, ashram and society, all these problems. So people wanted to bring people together and, you know, mm. have a bond army. He said, don't do that. For the moment, it is good that each one grows in their own way. And the mother says the same thing in 1957-58 conversation, probably 57. She says, you must become a Gnostic being before you can talk about a Gnostic collectivity. And she has a big vision of the uh, big hotel, which is one of those human collectivities. And she says, what is the nature of this collectivity? She says, the religious collectivity is formed based on a common belief system or a common code of conduct. And she says, this is the ancient types of collectivity. But here, it will not be based on anything external, but on something internal. Now, this is where you see the ashram specializes in. <laughs> you, you don't know who is really, um, uh, you know, engaged with the, deeply with the inner life and who is not. You can be totally taken away because there is no external marker. So that's because this is, she has taken away all that because otherwise there is a tendency to form a uh, collectivity around a mental ideal. And yes. all over the world, 
in a message she says that a new world has been born and all over the world there are people who feel it and sense it yes. it is to them we call will you collaborate so i think all this churning that is going on will eventually catapult a few more individuals into the higher and out of the social mass few more into the individual state this is what is happening because the society's hold is gone that old conventional way of do's and don't that is gone for sure and the old morality is oh that is gone that is gone yes. completely gone yes. there is you know that's very evident and then this uh, individual stage and then the next stage so this is a process through which out of the mass of mankind in the typical social order conventional social order because of this churning are throwing up like a rebel see in the western context if you go to europe there are many people who are atheist and shubindu says it is a necessary phase because otherwise you have to believe in that a kind of religion which may stifle your evolving impulse so atheism became necessary agnosticism became necessary with all that came individuality and then from the individual you will see few people suddenly something opens i think many of us have gone through this stage at least uh, i have gone through agnosticism and then you enter when you surrender when you are broken free from all that then you are ready for a true collective yoga otherwise just calling people together and doing some kind of you know uh, sitting together sharing mm. some meal together <laughs> lectures together <laughs> uh, there are people who try that kind of stuff but mostly they fail it is bound to fail i had a friend a muslim friend a good uh, friend in afos days and he would take a great pride that in our uh, community religion we all sit together and eat so it is called dastarkhan so you know he would invite us that you sit and eat i say, i have no issues about sitting and eating but that doesn't mean anything so i used to tell him this is not what is really required are your hearts one with those who don't believe in what you believe in mm-hmm. just sitting and eating together it's like brotherhood but those who believe in uh, my way of life or my understanding of life now this is bound to fail because it's so limited human beings will see through it and they are seeing through it so both level work is going on even in norwell there are some who are coming out of even yes. societies even orwell is a wonderful uh, there is a tendency to become crystallized into a formation people will break through now out of that some will take to the next step okay they will re- understand actually you know what we have not done is we are all into this mental idea or a will wonderful and but have we really surrendered to the mother she <laughs> this was the original plan there will be few maybe a handful out of all this churning and as people do that you will see a true gnostic collective coming into existence thank you Allah. yeah <laughs> uh, i'd like to ask one more yeah. i know i'm digressing but no 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 it's what do you feel about the tamas in india this uh, actually i'll tell you now what i see because i keep abreast with <laughs> some of the tv programs sure. <laughs> to tell you frankly <laughs> i don't watch them to be clear but if it is going on i see what is happening i see on the contrary a tremendous rajas <sighs> tremendous rajas and if you see recently last 5 6 years and i am really not saying about a political party or very a politically mm. such innovative things are coming out i don't know from where people are getting ideas and every day you will see and plenty of it i am keeping touch in touch with the latest is like you know people have a tendency to spit this is one kind of tamas i don't care now one of the things which have come up recently i'm sure i don't know it must be there in the west but i know about india this has come up is to create paper and other things out of um, Uh, not just biodegradable material but uh, seeds are there in it and after you throw it you uh, you just throw it and it will <laughs> grow into a tree now these are amazing ideas even spittoons of that kind now um, because india went through a long standing tamas then when the shake up came so parties and this and that was it intense play of rajas ambition and occupying the chair all over it was there 
Now this is shaking up. There are pockets where tamas is there. I don't know how the situation in Bihar now, but Bihar used to be extremely tamas. People are not interested in anything. Even Far East, it used to be at some point like that. Uh, a person will not take you on a rickshaw or anything just because why it's afternoon he wants to just have a nap or he wants to drink. And, but even there the changes are taking place. Even in the Far East I know. So uh, people are being shaken up. Um, I personally feel that now is a phase from Rajas. Some places they are trying to enter into a more Sattvic model. So this is not because of being an Indian but I see that change which is beginning to take place. It is um, still very far from what it can be. But we must understand, see the interesting part of India is, uh, you delay for a long time. But because there is that background thing, when it wakes up, it takes a leap. That we must understand, Indian mind is like that. You see, in 70 years, after 700 years of domination, how soon it is beginning to become one of the, you know, this is Rajas. Fourth or fifth uh, military power, financial power, I mean, okay, it, it's not the ultimate thing. But within a short time, 70 years is nothing in the life of a nation. Yes, yes. After 700 years and out of those 70, 75 years, initially we were just busy settling our own disputes and fractured and yet the way it is rising almost like a superpower. So, this is because the Indian mind has never forgotten, never really got ever cut off from the roots of Sanatana Dharma. This is the beauty of the Indian mind. Uh, everywhere else it is lost, the Gnostic societies in mm. the Western context, mm -hmm. uh, ancient Mayan civilization, the Greeks, the Paganism, yes. everything is gone. Yes. Paganism was so beautiful where you know you regard sacred as everything. Mm -hmm. It was gone, not because of Christ, but because of what people understood of him. He came to liberate mankind. But uh, instead, you know, again a cabin was put. But in Indian thought, because the Vedanta, the Upanishadic teachings, the Gita, it never ever died. It all, there was fresh streams which kept on bringing out the truth in new forms. And that's why one should... Uh, India is like a... Like China is called as a sleeping giant. So India is like, you know, <laughs> Bhim Sen who has <laughs> just temporarily gone into the mud. The day he gets up, he realizes he is Bhim Sen. He is not just an ordinary warrior. So this is what we see happening in India and I see a great surge of that seeking. More and more because uh, honestly being in contact with a lot of people, I see children and it's so amazing. I see children, uh, at least at this point of time, I am sure you, you must have met I know at least 15 children. Children means 7, 8, 9 years of mm -hmm. age. What an opening. It's just unbelievable. And this is a very small fraction. There must be many, many who are... And these are the hopes of the future. It's still a long way to go. We should not worry about it. Mother gave 300, 500 years. But the way it is rising, because the psychic of, you know... Yesterday I was sharing with Vivek that we are so fortunate. Things like surrender, faith, you drink with mother's milk. So that day from that stage of individuality, like I said, I was an agnostic. When I turned towards mother and Shri Bindo, there were no confusions. Faith, okay, fine, devotion, surrender. There was no confusion about all these things. It's just that I must find the path which is meant for me. Now this is meant for me, that's finished, done. So after that it was no more, oh, how do I surrender, is the mother a being, is she energy, is she? this was all settled. So that is because it is there in the background. So this is what we will see, another um, just 20-30 years, maybe less than that. You will see a meteoric rise, just preparing the base, take off point. Um, Okay, back, back more to predictions, but yes. I'll just right. hold on to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but it's good because we are talking about the individual and the yes. collective yoga. Thou shalt be one with God's bare reality and the miraculous world he has become and the divine and miracle still to be when nature, who is now unconscious God, translucent, grows to the eternal's light. Her seeing his sight, her walk, his steps of power, and life 
is filled with a spiritual joy, and matter is the spirit's willing bride. Um, Consent to be nothing and none. Dissolve time's work. Cast off thy mind. Step back from form and name. Annul thyself that only God may be. So what is collective yoga is described now on page 537. Collective yoga means each person now becomes a representative. That's how in the synthesis Shurabindu describes and the mother also speaks about it. So everyone who wins a little victory within oneself wins it for others. So at one place the mother speaks of it also even in the ashram context. They may be in terms of number, same with Auroville and world over. Mm. There may be a number of 2,000, 3,000 or whatever. But people who are really engaged in the collective yoga in the true sense would be uh, in 30s, 40, maybe 50. In the sense their consciousness has become vast enough to absorb or pick up a tendency and allow the divine consciousness to work upon it to bring out a new possibility. And here we see it begins with this, if thou would save the toiling universe, people want to save the world, okay, without um, getting their hands soiled. <laughs> That's what S is on the Gita Shivindu says. He says, you want to help the world, but you don't want your personal hands to get dirty. That's not how it can be. That is referring also to Gandhi, that you want to be a paragon mm. of non-violence mm. and a saint. While there are people who are dying, you can't do that. The teaching of the Gita is, Arjuna, If you that's not the path meant for you. When you enter, engage into the battle, you will have wounds. That's exactly Balram, Vidur, they never enter into the fight. But when if you want to save the toiling world, you will share its agony and pain. So he describes the vast universal suffering feel as thine. Mm. Thou must bear the sorrow that thou claimest to heal. For physicians, physicians heal thyself. (laughs) The day bringer must walk in darkest night. Yes, otherwise it's not possible. If you don't know what is night, how are you going to bring the light? And it's very easy to give advice. You know, that's why people often say, sometimes they say, I could give advice to everybody. But I said, yeah, you could give advice without experiencing what they are going through. <laughs> <laughs> it's very easy to give advice. Uh, but when you actually go through, you realize what it means to go through what one is going through. <laughs> the day bringer must walk in darkest night He who would save the world must share its pain. If he knows not grief, how shall he find grief's cure? Of course, he is not going to talk to people. You know what grief, that's not how he operates. (laughs) Shabinda, when he writes, my gaping wounds are a thousand and one. One would say, sir, where are the wounds? Just look at, just the agony he must be experiencing. From the disciples who write a letter and if the reply doesn't come next day, Mm. Sir, I thought you could write on a Sunday because it's a holiday. Shobindu, they believe that on a Sunday, Shobindu is having a holiday. And Shobindu writes that if you were to see the avalanche of correspondence on my table, even the merciless stony heart of a disciple would melt. <laughs> avalanche of correspondence. And he has no secretary to, you know... Um, he has to write those letters himself, you know. Yes. So this is how, and this is just one example, with mother people throwing all their anger and hostility and she has to return it with a smile, with love. So all this one has to go through. This is how. If he knows not grief, how shall he find grief's cure? If far he walks above mortality's head. How shall the mortal reach that too high path? So one of the things that I find so beautiful about Shurabindra and the mother personally, both were married, 
so they understand what marriage drive means. <laughs> Imagine if they never went through it and they gave a counsel. <laughs> no, I have heard actually a person. I have heard a person uh, counseling about. So I said, look here, you know, <laughs> it's a non-starter. Why? I said, this is a disqualified. <laughs> you have not experienced what it means. It's very easy to say things unless you have gone through that door. And both of them went through all the possible issues of the world. Then they could, you know. Which is why, which is best that we keep silence. Yes, often. yes. If Fari walks above mortality's head, like saintly person, they will come dressed in a certain coat, mm. they are sitting mm -hmm. on the pulpit, people go and offer malas, they'll give a talk, then they have a you know private life. Here there is nothing like that. How shall the mortal reach that too high path if one of theirs they see scale heaven speaks? So you have to become one of theirs. That's how he describes in the synthesis that who is the guru in synthesis? He is a child leading other children. Otherwise, it just, you cannot follow. It's too high. So mother comes down, plays him, their, her disciples who will get angry and start walking away. And the mother is leaving her game and walking behind to catch their hand and you know, trying to tell. <laughs> it's okay, don't be so angry. <laughs> if somebody saw that Leela, what would one understand? But she became like us, completely identified with us human beings. God must be born on earth and be as man, that man being human may grow even as God. He who would save the world must be one with the world. All suffering things contain in his heart space and bear the grief and joy of all that lives. His soul must be wider than the universe. One of my favorite lines, so yes. we'll just read it. Yes. And feel eternity as its very stuff, rejecting the moment's personality. That's why when mother was asked, mother, your paintings, they are priceless, should we get them back? She said, my child will live in eternity. My paintings, my child will live in eternity. Rejecting the moment's personality, know itself older than the birth of time, creation and incident in its consciousness, Arcturus and Belfage or grains of fire, circling in a corner of its boundless self. My favorite lines, like you become so vast. The constellations are burning within you. That is the vastness in which one enters. The world's destruction is small transient storm. Hmm. You want to save the world? Not through activism of an ignorant kind. Yes. But you have to be in such a vast consciousness that paradoxical it may seem that even if the world were to be destroyed, it's a small little incident. Then you can save. So it's a paradox. <laughs> if you rush into action... Um, in the way and then you look at yourself and see yeah. how small you are. In the calm infinity <laughs> it has become. And then comes this, you know, the entire passage. Yes. I'll quickly read it. If thou wouldst a little loosen the vast chain, draw back from the world that the idea has made, thy mind's selection from the infinite, thy senses gloss on the infinitesimals dance, then shall thou know how the great bondage came. So this stepping back... Much that is transient, it's of no importance. Let it come and go, fly away and step back from form and name. This attachment to form and name. And the superconscient conscious grow on thy tops. Infinity's vision through thy gaze shall pierce. Thou shalt look into the eyes of the unknown. Find the hid truth in things. Seen, null and false. Ah, very important. Even, yeah, very important. Otherwise, we have a summary rejection and we end up rejecting first the world and then ourselves. I am useless. But you will see the hidden truth. It may be a small little grain. At one place, the mother says, you know, we have to extract a little ingot of gold which is hidden in a whole heap of mud and dust. Little ingot. Small little piece of gold. And the entire labor is worth it for that. 
and it's obviously not an easy task behind things known discover mysteries rare i know this no we don't know it the mystery is rare what is hidden behind thou shall be one with god's bare reality and the miraculous world is become and the diviner miracle still to be when nature who is now unconscious god translucent grows to the eternal light what is nature mechanical seemingly unconscious and yet behind it there is a consciousness and intelligence which makes one wonder how is it planning everything in such a wonderful way her seeing his sight her walk his steps of power and life is filled with this spiritual joy and matter is the spirit's willing bride so this is the work matter has to become the spirit's willing bride this is the now we have the famous symbol of shivalingam the the shivalingam is the spirit and the base which we see that is the bride it's the union of the divine soul with material nature and when that can take place then only this world can become divine otherwise it'll all be we want a beautiful world and then we have those drugs to give you a very nice feeling or a two weeks crash course in nirvana that's not how a new world can be created it is a real solid work matter will resist to make it pliable supple so many countless experiences are needed and then comes these master lines consent to be nothing and none dissolve times work cast of thy mind step back from form and name and it is inwardly the state of the yogin in this state is whatever may be done stupendous work may be done but always there is a feeling that nothing you are doing that sense of being a non doer is so concrete nothing you are doing because you really don't have that there is no labor there is no effort of that kind involved things happen and they develop as should be the use the word in the gita action develops from within it is not something which you are striving trying but it develops from within and last anal thyself that only god may be so this is the next step after the psychic realization to completely anal oneself and let god alone be which is the um, you know we can use the word nirvana but you are one with the absolute that's why he says nirvana and the all negating absolute so that absolute consciousness that alone is there no more attachment to the temporary momentary personality with which we live and are and dwell and are tied to that must go so the first step is visiting cards <laughs> but people have a way huh? even in visiting visiting card you can write nirvanananda swami <laughs> what do you do about that <laughs> that reminds me of a semi humorous story you know yogi anirban i have heard this so how his name became anirvan he was nirvanananda this so one day he got hold of the life divine after reading it he said no no <laughs> what i have realized is nothing so he changed his name to anirvan and then he translated the life divine into bengali which was so beautiful when it was taken to shurbindo shurbindo did not even go through it he just simply took it and said give it to the press <sighs> and you will see that from that bengali version when hindi translation has been done it's very different remarkable the story was told to me by chote narayan ji so I and i have a very it. nice story by um, two people uh, i won't mention names but he was in the hospital for surgery many many times and he and his wife translated into modern telugu the mother oh wow. so that's how one has to consent to be nothing that thou mayest be all yes and all thyself that, that only, only god, god may, may be. be 
Namaste.